officially call this meeting to order. It's about oh, 20 minutes after 12 here on February 28th. This is the Ethics and Elections Committee. And uh, let's do some introductions. Start on the other side of the table. Forrest Dunbar. Dick Traney. Barbara Jones. Pete, and I'm the Chair Pete Peterson. And so we'll go right away into new business. And let's talk about some signature verification training that's going on right now. So you can see we have about um, about 16 people that are attending the signature verification training. We paid to have um, Washington State troopers come up to do the training. We did contact the APD and um, the FBI to see if they would do it. They declined. Okay. Um, interesting thing, I didn't know this until today that Andy said that Part of the state troopers' function is to support elections in Washington, and they do signature training every year for the state of Washington elections. So um, I think we're really lucky to have them, and it has been an incredible learning experience. So thanks but to you do Dick. a resolution for the assembly. I'd appreciate it for him. Okay. I'll Just do, do that. a resolution if you would. Because we can't do much, but I think a resolution would be a nice time. That would be really nice, Dick. I will do that. So, and so, just in case someone asks me, what is the cost of having them come up with this? Um, the cost was his airfare and a hotel room. So oh, wow. That's all it was. Great. So, it was less than, you know, $1,000. And we've gotten the Black Angus staying there. So, <laughs> believe me, oh. he wants out of here in a hurry. Would you have me? Yeah, that's right. I'm only kidding, guys. So um, that's it for the signature update. I know you have another meeting at one, so yeah, right. I'm going to kind of run through things quickly. All right, then we'll go to the vote by mail update. So we're at E minus 34 today, um, and and you know we are counting down the days, and we you know we have due dates based on days. We the most exciting thing is you know our big deadline was like day 45-ish and at, uh, to get the ballots all out down the front. Right. So we have the ballots. We approved them from our ballot printer. We got the ballots to the printer in, um, in Everett. We um, have envelopes. We're going to have like three pallets of envelopes delivered here today. Um, we have test ballots, so we tested last week at the hi. Oh, hi. Hi. We ethics and elections. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm talking about vote by mail right now. Um, and who did? Okay, and and um, everybody knows Todd Sherwood from the municipal attorney's office. So um, we got test ballots last week. We did logic and accuracy testing on the um, tabulation system. And we took the data, ran all the 226,000 voter records through the MIS and GIS process, wow. assigned a ballot style to every single voter except the thousand that we told you we couldn't find. No. So there's a, about 1,300 voters that don't have uh, an address. address. And it's okay if you don't have an address. The state will, you can still vote. Mm -hmm. And out of all of those, then we assigned a ballot package ID with Bell and Howell, and then got that file to K&H they have 199,000 ballot packages that'll be ready to go on the 13th. So, I mean, that was one of those significant events. I mean, it's going to happen. And now, voter registration deadline is Sunday. So we'll get the updated file from the state sometime during the week. We run it through the GIS process again, um, and we're not going to. It's not going to take as long because we've already done it once. We're going to compare it to the last file, and then we have what are the yanks? So somebody canceled their voter registration. 
we yank them from the 199,000. Somebody registered, they're a catch up, so we add them. Um, so we've got this, but we practiced it and it works, the yanks and catch ups. So I expect the list that's going to go down this week is probably going to top 200,000. I think we're going to easily top 200,000. So then the ballots go out the mail on the 13th. So I think we're all on target for that. Um, on target for training, we have a couple of little glitches. Fortunately, Dennis Wheeler is on top of those. Um, thank you for passing the code. That was a great, um, those were important to us. They passed it the last night, not last night, but the two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so I think all is proceeding as best I could accept, expect it. I think we have a big learning curve. You know, there are some processes we practiced during the mock election, but I admit we are, it's going to be a big learning curve. Like writing these letters to people, it is going to be a big learning curve. One of the ways I proposed addressing that, we're going to probably work nights and have a small crew here working nights, answering the phones, entering data for replacement ballots, having it ready to go in the morning. I think if it's a little bit quieter and calmer, we can do some of those hard issues like writing these opportunity to cure letters. I think if we work on that at night, it'll be a small crew. It's not handling ballots or envelopes. It's report writing and phone calls. And I'm telling you that because I'm going to keep the door locked. It's a little bit creepy down here. Right. We're mostly women. We're going to keep the door locked. If somebody in, you know, from the public wants to observe, I'll let them in, but I'm still keeping the door locked. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, I don't know if you want to talk to APD or someone else about, you know, if you guys are walking out to the parking lot, if you have any concerns, this is not the greatest neighborhood. I would have APD here to have people. And well, I mean, a drive by every half hour, 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, something like that. I don't know if you want to do that or want to have us do that. Um, we're going to a public safety meeting after this. Maybe we can that talk to great. APD and just let them know. What, what, when you say working nights, how late do you think? Well, Carolyn was here till. But I will tell you, things have improved a lot. One of the expenses that I asked you to pay for yeah. was putting a light in. And I told you that one night Carolyn and I were leaving and she had to have her cell phone lighting up the lock on the door so she and I could see yeah. but it's light out it, you know when we leave we've got great light out there now I thank Dennis Wheeler all the time yeah and if it's Carolyn and I here I wait for her to get her car and then we leave she texts me when she leaves we have an alarm system now. I have it on my smartphone. I can tell when she alarms the building. Okay. So I think our, but I still don't think it would hurt to let APD know. What days? I, well, what days? just about every day. From now to the election? Okay. Well, no, we're so here till probably, well, we're probably, you know, um, I would say that we're here until 8 to 10 o'clock every night. And then we're here some weekends till 10 at night. So we're here just about every day. So it would be that swing shift at 4 to we can 2 a.m. Just come down and make a walk with Rocker. You know, EPD could have the, do they have like a shift sergeant for a given area of town and maybe that person could make sure to check in with whoever is here just to see what hours you know. You know, a drive-by would just be great. You know, so like one night I left and one of the workers said, do you smell the pot? And I said, pot? <laughs> you know, and I, I thought, no, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, so you can smell pot coming off the river. I don't know if it's a manufacturing facility, but it seems unlikely. Yeah, so, that's probably just something you out there. Yeah. So, so anyway, we're we're pretty careful, but but I think that'd be a great idea for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll at the public safety meeting, one of us will just go talk to 
we're heading there, so we'll take care of Good. So, so anyway, things are going really good. Again, I expect a couple of glitches in our letter writing, in, um, you know, um, volume, um, you know, some of our procedures that, you know, we, we just haven't done it before. Right. There's going to be a couple of bumps. I don't even know what they are. So are you going to have some of these letters standardized ahead of time so that all we have to do is add the person's address or something on there? Or? It's even better than that. They're already done. It's a mail merge letter. We have a report that has a list of voters who don't who don't have a signature no signature and then we mail merge the report this letter goes to all voters it's already done it um, gets folded like this and dropped into a window envelope and it's all and we've done the window envelope so we don't have to do labels and make sure we get the right letter in the right envelope so that's all done so yeah it's pretty automated we still haven't. We practiced it, but not with real data. Okay. So it'll just take some a couple of real time go go throughs, and it should happen shortly after the ballots go out. We should start getting notice from people that said, "Well, I, I didn't get one of those ballots," you know. And and, and those are going to be a little bit different. So replacement ballots, we've got a system for replacement ballots. That, again, will be a little process. We're going to work on at night, small crews, so that we aren't in all of the hoopla going on during the day so that we can work at night. So I think we'll be okay, and I'll keep you posted. Um, and it's just looking at this group being trained over there, are we planning to have the signature verification going on 24-7? No, um, because that is something that I think should be observable. So that's a review of a ballot envelope. I think the public's entitled to review that. That'll be between 8 and 5. How many stations are we doing that? We have um, six, but we'll probably be doing four. If we need the six, we'll add the other six. I think one of the things that became clear from this, and I'm not sure if you noticed it, after a while it's, oh my gosh, I don't think I can look at another signature. So, And he indicated you probably need frequent breaks. So we'll do that. So that's it for the vote by mail update. Okay, so I guess we'll move on to outreach and education update. Come on over, Carol. Oh, here you go. Okay, um, outreach and education updates. Uh, radio PSAs will start airing next week, um, as well as television PSAs. Um, KSKA has had the um, television PSA running already. Um, and next week, two of the three other stations will start and then followed by the third station. So a lot of activity with getting our message out there on the airwaves. Um, digital, we've started boosting Facebook posts, and that has been an interesting process as we're sharing the, the message of vote by mail with more people. I think it's been really valuable. It's been difficult at times because of the... Um, the anonymity that the internet affords people and their obviously concern and so we're trying to address each and every um, question and concern <coughs> as possible and in a timely manner as well. Um, so we are addressing those and we're continuing with um, Facebook, boosted Facebook posts to make sure that we have a sustained message out there and letting voters know what to expect. We have 120 plus comments on one post back and forth. They did a really good job on it. Great. Remember, don't feed the trolls. Exactly. It's, it's pretty hard. You know, they're pretty rude and mean. And there was one on, you know, we posted um, the Black History Month 
photo is where you gave the resolution, which is just our standard procedure. And one of the comments on that was, when do we get white history month? And, you know, that's just one that was deleted. That's consistent with our policy. We just deleted it. Wait, but what, that was... That was connected to vote by mail? No, well, that no, was a I mean, It's the same Facebook page. Gotcha. So we have a policy, and we... Have you deleted anything yet? Any we, yeah, one we have... Comment? No, we've deleted oh, several. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Rich, you, you spoke at the Black History Month thing at Skyler Bank. Yes. I was there. I know. I know. Yes. Did you get with Cash K? Because they do the running. So I want to make sure we've got the PSA running on the running show. Mm -hmm. So it's... Because people in Anchorage watch that. I want to make sure we're hitting with PSAs, vote by mail. Yeah, I'm surprised the number of people watch that. I've reached out to them a couple of times to find out <coughs> when they're having it, and they haven't gotten back to me. I have. I will put in calls again. If you need somebody to be a foot shelter, I know where they're office is. I'm more than happy to knock on the door. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. We you have used your influence more than once. Yes. And, that, you, and I think Carolyn's going to talk about that. Yes, and um, that segues into my next bullet point, which is our outreach to ASD parents, um, parents of students in the school district. Um, the school district is allowing us to send students home with flyers to their parents. We need to figure out uh, an economical and efficient way of making this happen. Reason being, there are 47,000 students in the Anchorage School District, and it is on us, the municipality, to print all of these publications and to make sure that they're being distributed um, accordingly. So I have these other numbers here. Um, elementary school students, it's 24,000 students. Middle school students, there's 7,000. High school students, 11,400. And the alternative and charter school students are 4,800 students. So I'm not sure what you might think an appropriate approach would be, elementary school students or, or a, another form of, you know, kind of choosing the areas for... From my perspective here, I'd get all the students. Mm -hmm. Like all the students. As every student has an area. Yep. Sometimes two. Sometimes two. Does, does the ASD have a, do they have a breakdown for um, families? Or are they just, can they give us so that, you know, with my kids, the rule would be that I would get one flyer instead of two. I have two kids, but I still just got one flyer. Mm -hmm. You know, if we assume the flyers aren't too expensive to print, I think I would rather just you get two flyers because you got to be reminded a bunch of times and probably one of your, let's be honest, That's true. one of your kids is probably going to not bring it home. My son didn't bring it home, my daughter did. I, was, I wasn't going to stereotype, but I was going to say your daughter would bring it home and your son wouldn't. That's true. Um, so, I, I mean, <clears throat> could we print them out in like a very cheap fashion? You know, we have a, wait, can we use the printing office? Will they do it for us? Mm -hmm. And then could we just give like fat packets to the principals? I mean, would the principals be willing to spearhead it for us? So my understanding of the process is that we would put X number of flyers into one manila envelope like per school, and ASD would deliver it through their inter-office Okay, when do we process. have them? <laughs> We have not discussed deadlines. But we, we want to do it in March. Yeah. In ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. March starts tomorrow. Uh, did you, oh. Do a joint school board meeting, committee and stuff. And I came to him about this. I wanted to make sure they take these yeah. messages and they get to the parents and the kids. I can talk to ASD. I agree with that, but I think we should get the process going and maybe even get them printed well, get before it, that get them yeah. Yeah. meeting even happens. I appreciate your help in getting yeah. the message out to the parents. Yeah. And, and it should go out, I would hope, shortly after the ballots are mailed, or even a day or two before, before it might be good. We would like it to be in the mail. We would like people to have it, you know, either the first week of March next week. Yeah or early the following week. Is there, otherwise, you're going to have your ballot package and not know what to do with it. Well, I think that's something I was thinking about. Is there data from other jurisdictions about people throwing their ballots away because they just assume it's junk mail? Like, I mean, I get so much junk mail, I throw half my mail away without even really looking at it. 
I mean, are we worried at all that people will do that with their ballots? Well, you know, I think that we should be worried about that. And I think <coughs> that when we mail 200,000 ballots, yeah. a lot of people, probably 50% are probably going to put it in the trash. Yeah. You know, the issue that we're trying to emphasize is if you see a ballot in the trash or yeah. you choose not to vote, please turn it up. Oh, I think interesting. That, that improves the safety and security of the election. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so when our meeting is next Friday or the Friday after? It's a Friday after. Could yeah, so by the 16th, is that when it is, or the 9th? The 9th. No? The 9th. Well, no. The meeting? But I mean, we could. Could you oh, guys no, get this? I don't think you meet until the 20th. Oh, really? Okay, well, could we get this printed? either this week or next week and then get those new envelopes to the principals next week? It, I will check with Repro. I think it might be a tall order, but we can work in, in chunks. So we're exactly two weeks out, right, yeah. from the ballots uh, going, being mailed. Two so is this day. going to be a half page? Is going to be a full page? Both sides, half, front and back? What's, what's the plan? I'll go grab one. So she's doing a, a really, really great job. She's got me on with, when we started getting all the negative Facebook posts. Um, the Global Mail is stupid. Whose idea was this? Just super, super negative stuff. Sure. Um, she's got me on Dave Steeren, Picaro, and Good. another. So we're on AM Radio. Show yet? <laughs> um, we made a decision that kidding. that probably wasn't necessary since she's in the valley. Only kidding. So I don't have an exact example of what we're thinking um, of sharing. Um, but yeah, es essentially, we would share what is currently at the PAC for the Little Shop of Horrors and other concert association um, goings on. We have a stack of those. The only difference is that yellow part that is essentially the first part of the trifold, the front page, is swapped into the middle. And the reason being is because it takes repro graphics a tremendous amount of resources in order to fold the trifolds. And so the compromise that we made with repro graphics for um, the concert association and for the events at the PAC was to have an unfolded trifold version, just moving the just moving. Thank you. Moving this part into the middle, essentially swapping these two sides of information so that it's more visually, aesthetically pleasing <coughs> to those who pick it up. Great. So that was the compromise that we made. And so right now, that this is what we're considering. I'm open, obviously, to suggestions in ways that you think might be more effective. Well, black or white or color? Color. It will be color. color. And what I think is really important about it is it's got the locations of the accessible boat centers and the drop boxes, and then the map on the other side has the bus route superimposed on it. I saw that. So but I think that that's really a great... That's easy. One, two, three. Options. Yeah, and, and on this yellow part, it describes the three ways of how to return your ballot so that those steps are on there too. It, it's assuming an audience that hasn't may not have heard this before. Well good. I, I think that's great. And and you know, in politics and campaigns they say you have to you have to touch someone, you know, kind of in a non creepy way. You have to reach them seven times before they get your message, right? So yeah. Everything we can do. It's a part of it. Great job. Thank you. Think any other highlights, Caroline? Um, it sounds like you already touched upon it, the um, talk radio shows with Dave Steeren yesterday and Barbara is scheduled again to be on on March 13th. Um, this afternoon is Mike Porcaro and Rick Rydell hoping for Friday morning. Um, there was uh, Scott, <coughs> general manager of Channel 13, Channel 4. Uh, Maria has her office down in the Peterson Tower. I would just say yes. And they can shoot, they can do a video and news in the morning. Right on channel 13 for the morning. Okay. Scott Centers. His name is Scott. He's the general manager of channel 13. Yep. Just use my name and say we talk, you and I talk, mm -hmm. and see what they can do to get your message out because they're always looking for news articles and, and it'll help. Yep. What about uh, like Ron McBride? What should you do? something like that these longer pieces they do one on you or? that is something that is on my list I want to pitch to her because she does have that frontier show right um, so that is on our radar um, Scott Centers I will reach out to him how about um, John Tracy 
he's yeah, the worker channel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. but he does. He's got a news hole. He said he does. Mm -hmm. Reality check. Did we? Uh, so we're doing advertisements on traditional radio, right? And mm -hmm. those start soon. Yep. Did we ever? Did you happen to look into whether, like Pandora, and those kind of advertisements were too expensive or what? Pandora, they. We have to start at a minimum of three months advertising at seventy-five hundred dollars. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't so, three did we do Spotify long. then? So, last I knew, Charles is waiting to hear back from them, and we haven't—I haven't heard an update on that. I have to imagine it's going to be similar. <coughs> and you can do the videos on YouTube as well. Yes. So. Yep. And we're working on that this week. Right? Right well, actually, if you can believe this, I have a runoff calendar, I have runoff instructions, I have. So we are ready. How much money do we save? <laughs> How much money do we save if there is no runoff? Um, well, let's see. Is there a value to my sanity? <laughs> <laughs> How much? More? Yeah. Well, how much do a runoff cost? Well, you know, a runoff is an election. Okay. So I think you should go about four hundred thousand dollars for a runoff. I think one of the the biggest problems is, and and I would like to talk. We have to talk about it. And we're going to put it on the agenda for the meeting in June. The code right now, and and Dean has been helping me with the calendar. I was planning on mailing the ballots ten days out. So you certify, and then in like two days I mail the ballots. So you know the printer has to have everything ready, and we're going to get everything ready before certification. But the code actually says I don't have to mail them until seven days before. You know voters are going to kill us if we have a by mail election and they have seven days to vote. It's just not enough time. And it's not enough time from um, April 3rd to May 1st is yeah. the date of the runoff. So when we had originally met, we talked about making it the second Tuesday in May. And I think we just have to have that discussion again. I think it's just entirely unrealistic, yeah. as complicated as this is. That's so something for next week? In June. June. Yeah, I can't talk to you about it before that, but in June we'll talk about it. So we're ready. We're going to be ready. We'll do it. But after we've had sort of a post election shakedown, by June we'll, we'll be ready to look at making small changes to our ordinances. Right. Yeah, we got to go. We got to yeah, yeah. go to um, their public, public safety. safety. All right. So, in any other business that we need to talk about why we're here today that anyone can think of? This is why I came. Did that get passed out? Dean's memo on the stamps for votes. He just sent me the email electronically. Okay. Okay. What do you say? I, I, I can cover it in a minute and I, I reviewed it being wrote it and I made a couple of suggestions um, basically the answer is no groups cannot provide postage stamps which seems surprising but there's a interesting history that I'm aware of from having lived and worked on the North Slope Borough because the chief case on this goes back to when the borough was going to provide and did 10 gallons of gas to any voter that said they needed it to get in from camp or whatever and that went up to court and the court said yeah that's fine well the reaction of the legislature who and again this is from the borough perspective and having been there was we don't like the borough that's part of the borough's whole scandal plague administration up there from the 80s so they changed the law and they have specific exceptions of things you can do yeah they added nothing to value they mirrored the federal law what you can do is transport someone to the polls and my contribution to this is to tell me I think those vote by mail boxes are the new polls so they could give someone a ride there but they can't give them a but stamp, they give you a stamp. Huh. because that's a thing of value and it's very clear that they have a very specific list like you can give out brochures you can provide food at some kind of a meeting but if it's not on the list so we don't get to do it. Something to do for next year. We should get it added to the list. So that's a legislative fix. Yep. It but has to be. State legislature. State. Be, yeah. But you can't give your ballot to, to some group to mail for you. 
we, we don't we don't want that <coughs> happening because then they may not actually be the mailer. So we don't want to have some candidate sending people right. around picking up ballots from people saying they're going to mail them and it turns out toss them in the dumpster somewhere. I think that's going to be something we're going to stay out of, you know, because that is going to be impossible for us to monitor. Um, and I think Rick Rydell, is that who I was with yesterday? Yesterday was Dave Stern. Dave Stern asked me about um, ballot harvesting. And I said, I don't know what ballot harvesting is, and I'd never heard of that before. But it's probably something similar to that. So, you know, our position at a prior meeting in February, January, you gave me direction based on the committee even though Dean said he was working on this, that I could tell the nonprofits that they could give a stamp. Mm -hmm. And because I think you determined it was not a thing of value, and sure. I think a common reading is that it's not a thing of value. So I think we probably need to do uh, email to our outreach and education committee yep. and let them know about this opinion. And then I do have a call from a campaign on my desk, and I'll notify them. I told them it was a split. Committee said yes. Dean at the last meeting said no. And I said, so I don't know the answer. And I think it, it, it does, it, you know, at first blush it seems illogical, but then that stamp is 49 cents. And let's just change the facts a little and say, I'm from this group or that group. And they say, here's a dollar to help you go vote. Here's a dollar to help you go vote. Here's five dollars. And pretty soon you're like, yeah, okay, that doesn't ring right. And you know, this kind of thing is on that path, sort of, and, and I, I think it's a, it's a good analysis. It's well, it starts out at good, 49 cents, and next thing you know, they're passing up $5 bills. Right, right, and then everybody realizes, oh, yeah, no, I can not do that. Sorry, I think it's Sorry. sort of, I don't think you can get 49 cents back from the stamp. <laughs> so I still think it's not a thing of value, but either way, we'll follow the well, advice and let people know. The ones have to represent the court. Represents in court yep. so. there you go. All right. Well, uh, I don't see anybody in the audience that wants to participate, so I guess we're going to adjourn.